Hello, today we are going to write a code to calculate greatest common divisor or in short we call it GCD using C, C++ code with command line as input. When we say we want to process command line as our input, it means that we are not going to use scanf in our code because the input is stream or being supplied to our program at the command line at the same time when we launch our program. We will see this in more detail later. Before we start coding, let us get ourselves familiar with what GCD is. GCD or greatest common divisor by definition is the largest integer that can divide a given two integer. That is a mathematical definition. And if the two integer has no GCD, meaning the two given integer don't have anything in common that can divide them, this means the GCD is one because one can divide any number. And if that is the case, we call the two number a uh, mutual prime. Let us take one example of two integers of 42 and 60. And by the way, GCD is not defined on decimal point number, only integers, because numbers with decimal point carries no meaning with regards to divisibility. Only integers has that meaning. Okay, get back to the example. If we are given two numbers, 42 and 60, to get the GCD manually using the plain definition given, we list out all integers smaller than 60, for example, that can divide 60 without remainder. So over here, we can see 2 can divide 60, 3 can also divide 60, 4, 5, 6, but 7 is not, 8 also not, 9, but 10, yes, it can divide 60 accurately, 12, 15, 20, and 30. That is the biggest integer that can divide 60. Then we list the list of factors for 42. 2, 3 can divide 42, but 4 not, 5 also not, 6, 7 yes, 8 and 13 no, none can divide 42, 14 and 21 yes, and 21 is the largest integer that can divide 42. So there are a few factors appear in both lists. 2 appear in both lists. 3 also can divide both 42 and 60. 4 not, 5 not, but 6 also appear in both lists. And 6 is actually the largest one that appear in both lists. The rest, 10, 12, 15 and so on. 7, 14 and 21 in the second list. All these factors appear only in one list. So in this case, by the definition of GCD, 6 is the GCD for 42 and 60. But we, in computing, are not going to use this definition when we calculate GCD. We will use an algorithm devised by a Greek scientist called Euclid. So the algorithm is called Euclidean algorithm. How this algorithm find GCD? The algorithm will take the two number, let's say number one and number two. As long as number one and number two are not the same, we will do subtraction of one number from the other one. So as long as number one and number two are not the same, if number one is greater than number two, we subtract number two from number one. Obviously, we subtract the smaller from the larger. Then we repeat the checking again. If number one is less than number two, we subtract number one from number two and repeat until we get number one equal to number two. If that is so, GCD is the value of either one, number one or number two. Then we finish. So this is a more elegant and smart way to calculate GCD. In computing, we will use this algorithm. 
So in our console program with command line parameter processing, how does this uh, being done? Let's say we name our program GCD and we want to compute GCD of 60 and 42 again. When we say we want to process command line parameter, it means that we give 60 and 42 together with the name of the program that we are running. So we type GCD space 60 space 62. So 60 and 42 are the command line parameters. In order to use command line parameter, you need to utilize two built-in or standard variable that already defined for you. Number one is ARGC. ARGC will carry the value of the number of token, the number of words that we key in at command line. In this case, ARGC is three because why? We have GCD one word, 60 one word, 42 one word. So altogether, we have three arguments being key in at command line. The other variable that we need to utilize when we are doing command line parameter we see is an array, array of ARGV. The number of elements in the array is the same as ARGC. And the first index, the index zero, is always the name of the program that we call. ARGV one, the second parameter, or the first parameter, the second token, is 60 in this case. And ARGV2 is 42, the third token or the second parameter. And after this, the user will press enter. The two value will be sent to the program, GCD, and the program will print the value of GCD of the two number. Let us write this code. Start your Visual Studio 2015. Win32 console application from the auto generated code in the main function header. First, we need to declare the command line parameter that we want to use the ARGC and ARGV. This will allow us to use command line argument. The first is ARGC, which is only an integer. The second one is the array. It is array of string actually, but in C terminology, it is pointer to character. So we should say that this is an array of string. Or in C, we can call it an array of pointer to character. They are the same thing. So this will allow us to use command line argument. And command line argument are all in string. So we need to be able to process string also. In that case, we need to add in our stdafx.h definition of C++ string object. Make sure to take the string result.h because the one with h is meant for C. We want to use C++ string object. Save it then you can close it immediately then in a program that processes command line argument we first need to quickly grab the command line parameter that are given to us we need to keep this in string variable so we first declare variable with string data type it's just like this but you see by simply typing string IntelliSense cannot find string. This is because string appear in standard namespace or std namespace because we don't define any namespace that we are using in our code. We need to specify explicitly in this case. We need to put std colon colon string. Now you can see string appear in IntelliSense. So we call this variable number one. And because it is string, let us add str at the end of the variable name to tell that this is a string variable. Why we do this? Because later we are going to use number one integer also. So we declare the variable and quickly get the number one that's given to us in command line, which is 
ARGV1. We do the same for number 2 in a different variable. So once we grab the command line parameter as string, we need to convert it to integer quickly. So we declare two integers, integer number one int. This one will get the value from number one string, but after conversion, the conversion is from string to integer, story. But you see, again, story is not listed because we need to specify the namespace for it. Once you give the namespace, you can see story exists there. And what value do we give to story? We give number one string. We do the same for number two. Then, at this point, we get the two integers that we want to calculate, GCD4. So we go to the loop that tests whether or not the two numbers are the same, then subtract one from the other one until both of them are the same. So in this case, the best is while loop because we do not know how to step in this case. We do not know how many times we want to step. So while loop is the best because while loop only tests the condition either to continue with loop or not. While the two number, number one integer is not the same as number two integer. We repeat something. What do we repeat? Now we know that number one and number two not the same. If number one integer is greater than number two integer, what we do is we subtract number two integer from number one. Otherwise, else, which means if number two is greater than number one, we subtract number one from number two. So at the point where while loop is stopped, number one and number two are already the same. At that point, we can issue a call to printf to tell that gcd is equal to either number one or number two. We can print any of them. Basically, that is it. Rebuild and run. Let us try to run this program as usual by typing GCD. Let us see. You see, our program just now expects two input, number one and number two, so that it can calculate GCD. But by typing just the name GCD, we are not supplying the two integer that we supposed to supply to our program. This is not scan app. If we use scan app in our program, the program will launch first then the scan app will ask the two input or the two integer from us. But with command line, we have to put the value next to the program that we call before we press enter. So once you see this, you know that you are missing command line argument. So you have to click a bot, redo again. Let me give 42 and 60. So I get GCD as 6. I hope this program will calculate correct GCD for any other pairs of integer. So this is it for GCD calculation with command line parameter.